Hi there, this is Cheese. And I'm Lux. Let's build a spaceship. Welcome back to everybody who saw the first episode. To those of you just joining now, welcome forward, I guess? I don't know. Anyway, so in episode one, we went from an empty room with a loose pile of materials to actually pretty much the finished structural framing portion of this build. And then I got a little bit carried away doing a detail thing that really didn't need to happen at this point in the process. So that's actually what this episode is going to be about, just a little sneak preview into kind of my process. And then while trying to make ends meet, I spent basically the last month and a half of summer working on a couple of other unrelated projects. Uh, just a couple of which I will go over in a separate bonus content video soon. Uh, and then in the next episode, we're going to go ahead and get started on updetailing the first room, which is the loading bay. But for the time being, let's get to my hyperfocus. And today's plan is actually changing a little bit. Originally, I was going to just basically try to get through as much of the basic paneling as possible, and I might still get to some of that. But as I was going and realized that I wanted to take this curved part seriously, that's going to be my major project for the day. I want to put in I-beams. There's these interesting I-beams with cutouts. They have sort of a good submarine vibe to them. I'll see if I can put an image up uh, while I'm saying this. So I picked up these baseboards. They're made out of PVC. Um, and I chose them specifically because I just like how flexible these are. These are really going to be able to help me get the curve shape that I want. What I'm going to do is have two of these parallel each other with a section of wood between them to create that I-beam profile. I've got my measurements, radius, for the curvature of the I-beams. I'm going to go ahead and start marking out the central sections of the beam, which is just going to be a flat, large arced piece to which I affix the PVC molding. The whole thing is, of course, going to eventually get painted to look like metal. All right, I've got my three pieces here. They're all looking great. Obviously, there are some minor discrepancies since I hand cut these with a jigsaw. Uh, so what I'm going to do is screw and clamp these together, and then use a sander to bring them just a little bit closer in to each other's dimensions. I'm not too worried about stuff being perfect here, uh, in part because a lot of the seams and cracks are going to get filled with a putty anyway, so it looks like one continuous piece of steel, uh, but I would at least like them to be roughly the same. The next step is to do cutouts along the length of these inner beam segments that I've just made. So while they're still screwed together, I'm going to go ahead and draw those out, route them out, and then uh, we can get to assembling the I-beams. So the first thing I'm going to do to create these shapes is just trace basically the length of the entirety of this at an even distance from the edge so that there is a minimum width from which the holes can be cut. I think I'm just going to go for an inch basically the whole length uh, in from either side. I didn't like that, so I'm going to do it again at a different distance. I'm going to do less, three quarters of an inch in from either side. I think that'll give me a good satisfying shape and size of hole. So the final I-beams are going to be mounted vertically, of course. And I think I'm going to make sure that whatever cutout hole pattern I choose is mirrored vertically, basically at this point, and that I'm using pretty simple straightforward shapes that look like they could be machined reliably, um, maybe just one shape, maybe two different sizes of the same type of shape. Because I really, again, I want to drive home this subconscious sense of what material this is made out of. If I get too strange or too funky or use stuff like really sharp corners, it won't look like metal in the long run. Where I've settled that here is a, just a pretty consistent pattern that runs the length regular intervals. We've got a four by two, it's going to be a rounded rectangle, and then a two inch circle round a rectangle, two inch circle, and repeat with four inch solid sections between them. I'm going to draw it all out and then we'll see how it feels before I cut anything. I don't know why I'm recording so much about this except to say that like a really important part of basically any project is trying stuff and being ready to throw it away. Really not getting attached to your first attempt. Um, I, I, I got free rectangles in and realized I really didn't like this 
And so I'm gonna try shifting things up to add a little bit more visual interest. This is more complicated, so I'm, I'm a little less light, uh, less confident, honestly, that it's gonna read perfectly on the first try. But what I'm gonna try to do is rounded parallelograms paired with circles or possibly alternating rounded parallelograms and we'll see how that feels. Oh, I also decided to change the maximum width of all of the holes. And honestly, this one mostly is just due in part to the fact that this is just plywood. It's, in fact, if it gets too thin, it's gonna get a little floppy. And I really don't want stuff shaking around when we're shooting in the ship because that will give away that it's not steel. Uh, so I'm not gonna bring it in my much. I, um, I need to invest in a compass, but I'm using this, which is just a little bit under two inches, and this will be the maximum size of cutout. So I'll use this for my justification for all holes, regardless of shape. So yeah, I wound up just hand making a little jig, little template basically, that I'm gonna use to uh, trace these shapes on the length, and I am gonna alternate it every other one, so you get sort of this back and forth crossbar effect. And we'll see how that feels, and maybe I will keep this one, and maybe I won't keep this one either, but we're trying. We're gonna make this thing good. I do like the way this turned out. It's got a nice feel to it, feels machined. Um, I wound up basically doing this pattern down the entire length, except at the ends, I've got just a couple of circles. Uh, there will be things anchored to the I-beams along the walls, and so I like the idea of having different types of mount points. Well, I've got the router set up in this little table, which is a good start. But when these pieces are out at the end, keeping them flat on this little surface is going to be basically impossible. It's one of those cases where, although it feels a little strange, I really do want these edges, these cutouts I'm about to do, to be really nicely clean and vertical. And so I think I'm going to just build a table around this just for this cut. Nice. As much as possible, I really am trying to avoid cutting, sanding, any sort of especially power tool operation inside, in part for air quality and in part just, you know, to reduce the amount of cleanup necessary. I don't have like a central dust collection system, not yet anyway. Um, but for these pieces, it's worth it to do the little bit of extra cleanup, just be intentional about it. I want this good overhead lighting, and I happen to have a table that's exactly the right size to put my little uh, stand up for the router on. So I'm gonna just bite the bullet on this one and it'll be fine. All right, nice. Now all I gotta do is uh, get a new router bit, apparently. I don't have one that's long enough for this. Sometimes you just gotta sit among the ferns for a second recombobulate. I was taking the collet apart so I could swap it out for one that will fit this half inch shank and um, discovered that some of the parts on this uh, old router have fused themselves together over the years. Sometimes you gotta sit in your car in the dark for a second and just recombobulate. So this would be my dedicated quarter inch chuck router. I suppose I'll absolutely get use out of it for other stuff, um, but it's not gonna be viable for what I need right now. Fortunately, I have very cool parents who gave me a gift card to the hardware store, and uh, in part it's going towards upgrading my router situation, which will be great for this project and other stuff too. Uh, and it'll be nice to have a reliable plunge router as well to add to the toolkit. So let's do some updates. That's a functioning router table. Great, now all I have to do is make a template piece which is going on the bottom. And this is actually the first thing I'm gonna wind up using the router for is very carefully trying to do these as clean as possible so that when I do the big piece, it all just works smoothly in one pass. All right, first ever test with the new makeshift router table situation. Let's see what happens. It's working, but that's a lot of dust. 
Covered in workshop dust? No sweat. I'm gonna try to jury rig something up with uh, my shop back. We'll see. Honestly, that's actually working way better than I expected. Nice. One of these days, I'll get good about remembering my protective equipment before I've inhaled some dust. Oof, it's on the to-do list. Don't be like me. Do be like the part of me that's building a spaceship. Don't be like the part of me that's breathing in dust. Successfully made all the prime cuts for my jig, but more importantly, I generated enough dust to last me a lifetime. I'll have some of it for lunch tomorrow. Don't want it to go to waste. In this case, I'm just using the drill press to pre-remove as much material as possible because it's easier for me to deal with cleaning shavings than the fine dust that the router produces. Yeah, this, <laughs> this volume of lost material would have been uh, kind of a nightmare to do if it was all fine particulate. Well, sometimes stuff goes wrong. Honestly, not sure how I did this, but the justifications were all way off. But it took way more time to make the jig than to sandwich this plywood together, so I think I'm gonna redo the lumber and then just use the jig for the cut. Sometimes you just gotta hang out in the catacombs under the stairs for a second and recombobulate. Okay, let's go! On second thought, although it is super frustrating to have spent hours making a perfect jig that I now can't use for these pieces, instead of just wasting this material, I'm gonna try my hand at just freehand cutting these and Maybe if I make my cuts really carefully and I'm lucky, it'll just work smooth. We're just gonna try it and find out and um, we'll take it from there. Worst case scenario, I'll end up just remaking the stock anyway. In a way, this feels kind of like a rite of passage. I think every maker channel that I enjoy and I respect has had stuff like this happen at least once, often more than that. Failure is the price we pay to learn. It's worth it. And so it is with a curious mix of resignation, optimism, and determination that we simply start again and see what happens. Well, the cut's happening cleanly and it looks good, so although it's definitely not the way I was hoping this would go, I think if I take this slow and steady, um, it'll still be feasible. But it's also going to take me a while, because now I'm doing it the hard way again. I'm doing it a different hard way. Attempt one was hard <laughs> for different reasons. It would be difficult to overstate how glad I am that I went all in on dust protection on this one. Oh boy. But, um, got a piece. All right, the cuts are done with some careful sanding and then the surface treatment and texture that they'll be getting in the long run to look like old steel. I think this will work out okay, and I can't reasonably justify spending any more time on this uh, particular part of the build. It's already taken a lot longer than I anticipated, but it is what it is, and it could definitely be a lot worse.
also realized I can't um, actually put these together yet with the other parts of the beams because I want to be rounding off these otherwise impossibly perfectly sharp corners so that it looks like cast metal extruded steel beams uh, wouldn't have crispy crispy edges like this. Uh, however, I took another look at my quick reference at some airplane and submarine hull ribs. Uh, these crispy, perfect 90 degree corners won't quite sell what I need them to. I don't actually have a round over bit for the router yet, so I've got one that's coming in the mail tomorrow. Um, I'll just hold off on these and move on to something else in the meantime. Alrighty, so I picked up this pretty straightforward chamfer bit. I'm going to use a little piece of scrap to test, dial in what kind of edge I want on these pieces. And then I carefully assembled the I-beams using a series of screws to attach the PVC molding to the wood at intervals along the length. There's a bit of a time lapse of this process at the end of the video if you want to see more of it. So that's the three I-beams assembled and just loosely balanced in place for now, which is why they don't seem like a very good fit. Um, they're certainly not perfect. There were a couple parts of the assembly that I rushed. I wish I had uh, heated the plastic up a little bit before doing some of the tighter bends to avoid stuff like cracks, but that can be filled easily enough and will be invisible once the whole situation is painted. In retrospect, the I-beams were definitely me getting carried away on a part of the build that didn't need to happen just yet. I wouldn't say I regret doing them, they needed to happen eventually anyway, and I'll definitely use some of the tools I developed, like the router table for other parts of this project, but uh, that main central area is not where we're actually going to be starting uh, up detailing the ship. So it's time for me to move on to actually starting to make rooms one at a time look and feel and function like their final form so they can be used and seen on screen. When I started this, I was thinking I would start with the cockpit because a whole lot of content is going to happen in there and it'd be nice to be able to shoot in there sooner rather than later. But also, a lot of the techniques I've developed for working on my builds in the past haven't been tested at a scale of this size. And so I'm going to start on a room that's a little bit simpler functionally, which is the loading bay. So we've got our ladder up to the cockpit here. Loading bay is this whole front section area, which is going to have a functioning door that opens out onto the green screen stage. And practicing in this area, which has less mechanical complexity and a couple of large flat surfaces, will enable me to get a handle on how I'm going to be approaching details and surfacing for a lot of the other rooms with much more complex requirements. And it'll feature me getting to use a bunch of this delicious garbage you see down here that I've been collecting over the last couple of years. Uh, can't wait to show off my trash. Next time, see you then. <laughs>